we're not First Nations people from 200 years ago pre-contact. We're First Nations people that have a really interesting dark history in this country. And so now we're coming out of that. It's powerful that we have the ability to be able to control the parameters of how we re-emerge into the world. Each person in the group is an artist of some sort. All of us have this desire and passion within us to be creative. We have two different views and two different worlds coming together to try to make something that works. Because we were doing the really true fusion piece more in a traditional style, we really take it in a whole new electronic direction. In our art form, I think a lot of people are scared of technology. It doesn't necessarily make you a more creative person, but it gives you the ability to be able to try new things and to evolve. Part of that collaboration was showing that we are inclusive, you know, like we've come through a dark time now, but we're forgiving and we want to work with people and we want to try new things and we want to branch out. And so Daniel has been really integral, I think, in maintaining a lot of the performance integrity as far as that goes, because he's an amazing DJ. He does amazing work, like he's so electronically inclined, it's not even funny. On this project, I guess I have a few different functions. Uh, I've been sort of spearheading the, the remixing side of things and also uh, sort of organizing, getting into the studio and working with Jim Holland, who's our, our mix engineer. Almost like a coach where it's like, okay, we, we want to get this performance, we want to make sure we get all of these tracks. For what it's worth, which is one more take, I, you're really close. It's like, it's just the start was a bit weird trying to figure it out, but then once you got it, you got it and it's very cool. And then, once we got sort of those original uh, songs down, then going in with Jim, taking the, the files, the actual audio samples out, and then bringing them home to my studio, working on the remixes, and then sitting down with Blake and Sean and some of the other composers and sequencing and editing all that stuff into what we have on the dance floor. And so part of that was getting him to follow our traditions as well. So we told him specific things that we didn't want to do. We told him specific things that we can't do, specific things that we we're like, no, we're not doing this, we're not doing this. And then he would tell us what is possible. My role with Adaka Kwan is a song leader. Uh, what we say in our language is a shi sa ti. So shi meaning song, sa ti means master. It is a role that within the community and the elders within our group sort of watch as I was learning to sing and dance and learn the songs. After a number of years, they felt that I was ready to take on uh, a leadership role, to learn the songs, to learn the histories of the songs, to learn when these songs should be used, uh, what the songs are saying. When I had been asked by the elders to take this role, this uh, position as being a song master, it was of such a high honor. So with Dr. Kwan and with our traditional style, tradition is such a weird word to use, but um, what I'm talking about are our old songs. So we have old ancient clan songs that are part of our property, our ownership as individual clans. They've come down through the lineages through our mother's lineages. That's how it works in our culture. And a part of that is songs, right? The songs and the history and the stories that go along with them. None of the older songs, none of the clan songs are represented on this album. These older clan songs are not for everyone to sing. You know, we're given permission. We do not sing any songs nor perform any songs that we do not have permission to use. We didn't want to use any songs that belong to anybody specifically, any grouping of people or any sort of clan affiliation or ceremonial songs. We wanted songs that were important to us, but that were created by us. And I think in doing that, we just maintain a lot of the, um, a lot of that cultural integrity that goes along with those old songs. We create new bodies of work. And these are emerging from different members of our group, from Daka Kwan. Uh, Megan's composed songs, Blake's composed songs, Sean's composed songs, Gary's composed songs. Songs just start coming. You know, we've worked really hard on understanding who we are, what our identity is, and knowing the foundations of our culture. 
I think that allows us to be able to expand a little bit, you know, in other areas. Kind of remixing original compositions is a way of expressing that. Before I had actually been asked to go on to the learning journey of being a song master, I used to work outdoors a lot. And during lunchtime, I would sometimes go walk up partially up a mountain. And in this one particular day, I was just walking amongst our trees and I just started hearing this song. But it wasn't like I was hearing it in my mind. I was hearing it around me. It was almost like it was being sung to me and I was quite excited about this and I never thought I could ever record a song that had such meaning. When I started hearing the song, I was really thinking about some of our older ways of doing things. So a lot of the teachings they say about songs is that they come to you, so you'll start hearing them without thinking about them. So it's kind of an interesting thing because usually they come to you when you least expect it. Part of that teaching was that we were just open to listen. I always hear songs all the time, so I'm always recording them in my phone. With the singing that we do, um, we try to maintain the way that our ancestors sang. So we base it off of a lot of the same vocable patterns and the same vocal patterns that they had for their songs. And we've learned this through our language lessons and stuff like that. We've learned what words can be used. They more like emulate feeling than they actually do represent actual words. Like even opera music, like I don't know what they're saying, but you feel it. And so that's part of the neat thing that we can incorporate with our music as well, is focusing on those feelings. And when songs come to us, what is this feeling? What are we doing with this feeling? Where are we going to put it? And we thought that if we were going to do this project, that was really important to honor both sides of how that music came to be. They're not traditional songs in the sense that they're not clan songs. They're not like the 10,000 year old songs. They're new compositions, but we wanted to approach them in a traditional style. For most people in Dakaguan, that was their first time being in a recording studio. And it's interesting because being in a recording studio, it's more about your imagination. Uh, you have to imagine that there's like 5,000 people out there and sort of my role as the producer is to just sort of get on amping it right up. And those little bits of encouragement totally make the difference between like the take you're gonna put on a record and the take that just doesn't quite feel how it does live. Weird at the beginning, awesome in the middle. <laughs> so yeah, but great warm up. So if you wanna just roll another one and then come back to that one. I think that that was something that was a little bit different being that there's 20 of us and there's only one of him. And so I think that was kind of an interesting experience for our dance group, just to have one person representing themselves and then to have all of us standing there united, working with alongside this person. If we are in a performance and we, and we don't have that energy and that spirit, it really affects our singing and, and how we all put it together. It took us quite a while to find that rhythm and that groove for our spirit to be happy doing this and, and for it to feel that this is what we're supposed to do. And so it was a definite challenge at times. Hey, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> get it, get it, hoo, ha, hoo, ha. There was a lot of energy in there. It was fun, you know, to kind of hear ourselves in a different way. We could actually hear like the playback, so we could literally hear what we sound like. Did you guys hear us singing too low? Like when we were in well, there? Well, we're in there, no, I didn't No, it, no. Sounded, it sounded different. Yeah. 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 I think we sound good, though. <laughs> <laughs> in the room, that's all I hear. It sounds amazing, we, but we just, the girls just need to lift just, up our pitch. I just hear me. Daniel was so nice, too. He'd be like, OK, that was really great, but you got to redo it. We're just going to do one more take. We do it one more time and just think, like, 10% more energy. If we could try it one more time with just a little more oomph. That sounded awesome. Just one uh, gentle reminder, even when you're warming up, if you guys can start from silence. It was interesting to see how some of the other performers in our group dealt with under pressure, you know, dealt with like being put in their place and their positions of where the strength of their voice is, because we actually had to look at each other's voice. Like we had to see like who the strong singers were and we had to position them in certain ways. Where Something that was different about starting out with 
the ability to go into the studio and record from scratch. There was a lot more control, voices on their own and drums on their own, because what it gives you is a lot of fidelity, like you can hear every single instrument and every single voice. So one of the fun things that we were able to do when working with Daniel is that he, um, he was really big on recording different sound bites and sound clips. So he would take like different things like our drums, our rattles, even our foot stomps, our box drum sound. You get just the rattle for a second. Total silence and then rattle. So total silence. Awesome. I used an ads in one of the, in, in my song, I used an ad sound. Something I really enjoy doing as a producer is sampling like outside sounds. So the things that we grabbed, which was really important in the studio process was we grabbed just the drum beats on their own. So we would have like 20 drummers and dancers all in the space and we could record like 20 of them hitting the drums all together. And so that allowed us to get the drums to be really, really powerful, to have a lot of impact and, and depth and clarity. Sometimes in the studio, you sit down and it's like building a Lego set or something. You're like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and it all is like that. But other times, it's more like a stream of consciousness. You just sit down and the like remix flows out of you. The whole approach was to get as close to their sound and their style so it still felt natural, but then add all the electronic stuff in behind. And so you end up with this really cool sort of tribal sounding thing, um, but it has space to move. You know, it's got all this room for the instrumentation and the bass lines to just really fill up the whole space. Daniel was really good to include us. We treated it as a learning experience. Yeah, he basically babied us through the process. So we got to see like the actual digital recording and what he was doing. And so he showed us like all of the specific things. Each breath you took is like less spaced out. No, oh, okay. So we shortened, like every one of those is a little chop. So I kind of like condensed it, but all I took out was little breaths basically. So all the words are there. really dry right now so we'll put some reverb on it I think it should have like a really long fade in. we're all musically inclined in the dance group majority of us have some sort of small or large um, background in music so I think that that was um, a really good having that tool just to be able to work with him they'll have an idea but they won't always have like the technical language about how to express what that would be in the audio world. So they'll say, well, I kind of want it to have like a, a build here of the energy and then the vocal does something where it rises and then, then you know, this bass drop happens. And so I have to take something like that. And I'm like, okay, so I will have to like put in all these kick drums and then like add this like filter that only lets like this many frequencies of sound through and then it'll open up and then boom, we'll have this sweet remix. <laughs> Oh, it would have four steps down. Because it would match the ah uh, ha ha ha. Oh. It would almost match that. that yeah, because the ah uh, ha 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 is ascending, so you'd yeah. be doing a descending bass note with the ascending. Yeah. Yeah, let's try it. We are representatives of our culture. We are representative of being Tlingit. And we know that we have younger ones, and we have people our age, and we have people who are older than us watching us. We take into consideration that it is our responsibility to represent our culture in a positive way. It's kind of like the name of this concert, Deconstruct and Reconstruct. We are taking something that is in an older style of music and taking it apart to create something new. I'm really excited about how this could inspire our younger ones to hold their head up a little bit higher, be a little bit more proud for who they are. <laughs>